couple disclaimers first. I'm not a native speaker, so forgive any mistakes. And I am very cold, so that's why I'm doing this with my jacket on. I'm not in a hurry to get out. So my name is Alessandro De Santis. I'm a software engineer, and I currently work for Nebulab. And for those of you who don't know us, we're an agency that specializes in e-commerce. And we're also the technical and community director behind Sodus. So today we're going to talk about extensions. I want to explore their current state a little bit, uh, what we're doing about them, and what the future holds for them. And before we dive into that, I want to explore the why behind extensions. So why they're important for Sodus uh, and why they're important for its community. And there are a few reasons that we've identified. The first one, and this is true for most open source software, is that by adopting extensions for your store, you are dramatically reducing your overhead. So you are reducing your implementation time, but you're also reducing your maintenance efforts, which makes it uh, quicker to get to market, which is especially important for startups, and it also allows you to save money. The second reason is that when you implement most of your source functionality by using extensions, uh, it becomes much easier to onboard new Solidus developers. So if you use extensions uh, and you get new Solidus developers to join your team and they know those extensions, they can be productive and good to go from day one. And this is especially helpful when you want to scale up your team. And finally, what we realized uh, is that the state of our extensions ecosystem is an indicator of the overall health of Solidus. So if I'm researching e-commerce frameworks and I see that Solidus has an extensions ecosystem that is vibrant and alive, then it is much more likely that I will end up adopting it as my e-commerce solution. And on the other hand, if I see that extensions are old or buggy or unmaintained, then I may end up going with something different. And in fact, when uh, people inquire about Solidus, the questions they ask most often are about the extensions ecosystem. They want to know things such as how many extensions we have, who's in charge of maintaining them, and what kind of support they can expect from the community. So it became clear to us uh, that extensions are one of the most important factors uh, for people to adopt Solidus, uh, and so we need to do our best job possible to make sure that they're in good shape. Let's take a look at where we are today. We have more than 50 extensions, and that's about 180,000 lines of code. And this may not seem like a lot, especially if, you, if you're used to working on large Rails applications, but just to give you a bit of perspective, the entire core of Solidus is 120,000 lines of code. So this is like having one and a half more frameworks to maintain. We have six awesome members in the core team, and they only have 40 hours in their weeks and full-time jobs to attend to. So it's very hard for them to find the time to look after both the core and the extensions ecosystem. Now, just by looking at the numbers, you may think the situation doesn't look very good and there is no way that we can get extensions in shape. But what I want to do during this talk is take a look at some of the problems that are preventing us from doing this and figure out if there is a way we can solve them. The talk will be structured in four parts. In the first one, maintaining extensions, we'll talk about what it takes to maintain extensions from a technical perspective. So things such as implementing new features, keeping extensions up to date, uh, reviewing issues and pull requests, and so on. Then in extending extensions, we'll talk about how our approach to configuring and customizing extensions is changing to align with what the core team is doing. In governing extensions, we'll talk about governance, and in particular about the governance model around extensions, so who's in charge of maintaining which extensions. And then finally, in advertising extensions, we'll talk about marketing and how we can make sure that all this work is seen by the community. So let's dive right in. Who here has ever developed or maintained a Solus extension? Right, quite a few. And you know that it is quite some effort. You have to do the initial implementation, but then you also need to make sure that the extension is up-to-date and compatible with all the latest Rails versions. You need to engage with the community, and the list of tasks goes on and on, and most of this is recurring stuff. So it's not just set and forget. And when you look at our extensions, uh, unfortunately, we haven't done a very good job of making sure that the extensions kept up with the development pace uh, and the quality standards that we are now used to seeing in the core. I have a few problems here that I want to talk about. So the first one, and the first thing you notice when you open most of our extensions, is that we are not doing a great job of keeping up with issues and pull requests. 
And this means that we are losing valuable contributions from the community, but it's also discouraging for new contributors. Because if I want to contribute to an extension and I see that the maintainer is not very engaged with the community, then I may end up not submitting my patch. The test suites are one more problem that we have. And you know that feeling when you open an extension and you see it has a broken Travis patch and you think it's just temporary, but then you open Travis and you see the last six, eight months or last year of builds for that extension have failed. And you know that the extension doesn't have a reliable test suite, so any upgrade may potentially break your app at some point in the future. And it's also discouraging, again, if you're a contributor, because if you don't have tests that you can use to validate your changes, then it becomes that much harder to contribute. So once again, we are losing users, uh, we are losing contributors. And documentation is another huge pain point. I have an example here. So by looking at this, you may be pretty sure that you're looking at a spree extension. It has spree in the name, it has spree in the summary, in the installation instructions, basically has spree all over the place. But this is actually a Saldus extension. It's Saldus handling fees, and it was forked from the spree one, but the maintainer didn't have time, or maybe they didn't think it was a priority, um, to update the documentation with the right framework name. Now I just picked the most obvious example here, but there are actually many worse scenarios. There are situations where the documentation for extensions is outdated or non-existent, and so it becomes very hard for new users uh, to figure out what the extension does. Now I just explored three of the problems, but there are a few others. Most extensions don't have a changelog, so when a new release comes out, it's very difficult to figure out if there are any new features we can adopt, uh, or maybe any monkey patches that you can remove because an extension point has been implemented. Coding style is often inconsistent in extensions because not all of them use Rubocop, but if they do, they don't enforce it, and so they introduce new code violations all the time. Many extensions, even when they have a test suite, and even when the test suite is passing, are often not testing the right stuff or not enough stuff. And this is especially bad because it creates a false sense of confidence, where now I'm making changes and I think I'm fine because I'm not breaking any tests, but in fact, I may be breaking stuff in people's production applications. And finally, we are not doing a good job of making sure that extensions are kept up to date with dependencies versions. So when a new dependency comes out, we are forcing users to stay on old versions, which means they can't use the latest features, they can't use the latest performance improvements, and it's also a security problem because they can't use the latest security fixes. So clearly there's a lot of stuff to do, and it's clear that we can't ask the core team to deal with it. So what can we do? We started looking at different solutions, and we ended up with something that was originally devised by Stanbolt, and we think could apply well for Nebula too. At Nebula, we have Investment Fridays, as Thomas was suggesting earlier. So we only work on client projects from Monday to Thursday, and we reserve Friday for stuff such as working on open source projects, writing blog posts, uh, and studying new tools and technologies. And we currently have more than 20 developers who are working on Saldus projects full time. And that's a lot of manpower that we can tap into. So what we did was we compiled a list of Saldus extensions and we graded these extensions by importance using factors such as how strategic the extension is in the Saldus ecosystem, how much activity it sees from the community, and how many stars it has on GitHub. And then we assigned each of these extensions uh, a maintainer. And well, we actually asked our maintainers to volunteer and step up to maintain these extensions. And many of them were happy to do it. So these maintainers will implement new features, of course, but they will also work on reviewing the issues and the pull requests to keep ties with the community. They will improve the test suite to add more meaningful examples and more realistic scenarios. Keep the dependencies up to date so that users can leverage the latest features and improvements and maintain the documentation to make sure that it's as helpful and relevant as the extension changes over time. And finally, because our developers work on all those projects full time and most of these projects use a lot of extensions, they can speak directly to the users that are using these extensions and gather feedback on what's working and what's not to improve the extension. On the other hand, we also wanted to make sure that the time of our maintainers is spent on things that are truly important and that they don't have to do any boring or repetitive tasks. 
So we are trying to automate as much of the maintenance work around the extensions as possible. And we hope that the entire community will benefit from this. We're doing this with a few tools. The first one that we're introducing is quite simple. It's just a README template that you can use to streamline the documentation of your extension. And it has things that are specific to Solidus, such as configuration instructions and different licensing options. So you can choose the license you prefer. And we are using this internally for all of the extensions we maintain. And we hope that by doing this, we can provide a better experience for users who are evaluating extensions and deciding which one to adopt, but also for existing users who want to figure out uh, the true potential of their extensions. This is open source. You can find it at spaghetti.co slash Solidus Extensions Management. So check it out and let us know what you think. We also wanted to provide a, a simpler way for extension maintainers to generate change logs without having to write them manually. And so we looked at a few tools uh, and we ended up using GitHub Changelog Generator, which basically will generate your changelog by looking at the issues you closed uh, and the pull requests you merged since the last release. The end result looks like this, and it's pretty cool, especially when you consider that there is no human work involved. And it also has the additional benefit of encouraging extension maintainers to use pull requests for all changes so that they can get a changelog for free. One more problem we've seen is that maintainers are having a hard time keeping track of pull requests for their extensions. And so for this, we used the pull reminders and we installed it in the Solidus Slack organization, which means it's now available to all extension maintainers. What this will do is it will ping you on Slack when you get a new pull request review, and it will continue to bother you periodically until you take action on that pull request. Of course, you can decide uh, which notifications you want to receive and how many you want to receive, uh, but we strongly encourage you to leave this on so that it does the work for you and you don't have to keep track of pull requests manually. This also provides uh, useful statistics on things such as how long it takes us on average to review a pull request. And in the future, we hope that we can use this uh, to do things such as figure out when an extension maintainer needs help because they're getting a bit behind on their pull request reviews. For dependency management, we went with Dependabot. And again, we have installed it in, in the Solidus organization, and it will be available for all extension maintainers. And some of you may be familiar with this because it's pretty popular in regular Rails applications. But basically, this will create a pull request in your extension whenever a new dependency comes out. And it will include a bunch of information such as the release notes and the change log and the commits in the pull request review so that you can review everything and make sure that the, extent, the new dependency is compatible with your extension. And when the time comes, all you have to do is click on Merge. Now, all of these tools are pretty cool, but they're really nothing new to the Ruby and Rails communities. They've been used uh, for a long time. They've been used in open source projects. Uh, and we hope that by com combining them, we can dramatically reduce the effort of developing and maintaining Solidus extensions. With that said, there were a couple of challenges that were unique to Solidus and required a few new solutions. So let's take a look. So one of the problems was that all extensions used a different RSpec configuration. And this created issues in local development, especially for those maintainers who are in charge of multiple extensions, because sometimes you want to apply the same update to all extensions. But most importantly, it created issues in CI environments because very often your Travis or Circle CI build would break due to external factors, such as a new Chrome version coming out uh, and your spec configuration using an outdated configuration version. Stenbolt had already designed a solution for this in the form of a reusable feature helper that comes with Solidus support, but for some reason it was never really widely adopted. So we simply tweaked it a little bit and we adopted it in all Solidus extensions. So nowadays, if you want to test your Solidus extension, you simply have to include these four lines in your spec helper, and you can run rake, and that's it. You get consistent test runs across all your extensions in local development and CI. The second problem, and this also has to do with testing, is that CI configuration needed to be updated every time a new Solidus version came out, because the supported Solidus versions were hard-coded in the configuration. And so we fixed this by using one of the latest features, shipped by CircleCI, which is called Orbs. 
And these are reusable configuration packages that you can pull into your CircleCI configuration, just like you would do with a regular RubyGem. So what we did was we created an ORB that allows you to test your extension with all the currently supported Solus versions at any given time. And all you have to do is simply copy paste this sample CircleCI configuration and you're good to go. Well, let's take a look at what it does line by line. So the first thing I'm doing is I install the Solus IO slash extensions ORB, which is the one we created. And the volatile specifier here allows CircleCI to always pull the latest version of the ORB. And we'll see why that's important in a second. Then I define which databases I want to run my tests with. And we recommend leaving the default, which is MySQL and Postgres, but you have the flexibility to choose in case your extension only supports one of them. And finally, I define two workflows. This one is pretty boring. It will just run the tests when a new pull request is created or merged into master, as usual. But this is where things get a little bit more interesting. It will run my entire test suite every week against all the currently supported Solus versions, but also against master, so that I'm sure that my extension is compatible with the upcoming release of Solus. By centralizing our CI configuration, the hope is that we can work more closely with extension maintainers to make sure that they're always using the latest features that we ship, and also that their extensions uh, are always ready for the new release of Solus. Most of the credit for the work on this goes to Alberto for designing it and implementing it, so let's give him a round of applause. And finally, all of these improvements have been integrated with Solus CMD. So nowadays, if you want to start developing a new Solus extension, all you have to do is install Solus CMD, run Solus extension, and you're set up to party. All right, let's move on, extending extensions. As you know, the core team is actively working on making Solus easier and easier to customize. And we wanted to bring some of that effort to extensions as well. So this is a piece of code from Solus product feed, which is one of the extensions I maintain. And it's pretty simple. It just creates an RSS feed of your Solus products and you can then import this feed into your Google Ads account. Let's take a look at how we could go about extending this. So our first approach historically was to use class eval, but this has a bunch of problems, which I'm sure we're all aware of. You can't use super unless you define an alias for the original implementation, which is a bit ugly and can lead to bad issues if you're doing weird stuff. And it's hard to debug when things go wrong because there is no easy way to get a list of all the places where I'm calling class eval on a given class. But most importantly, the problem with this is that there is no clear distinction between public APIs and private APIs. And so what may happen is that I'm, I'm overriding a private API from an extension and the extension maintainer updates that API and breaks my customizations because they have no way of knowing I'm using that as a customization point. Our second approach was to use prepend, which has a couple advantages. I can use super and it will reference the original implementation as I'm expecting. And I can call ancestors to get a list of all the modules that are being prepended to a class. But there's still no distinction between what's a public API and what's a private API. So it's still a very brittle approach. As I said, we want to go the same route as Solus did. So we are going back to the basics with plain old Ruby objects. And in this scenario, what you would do is define your own feed product class and then configure the extension to use your own class instead of your original implementation. And this solves all the issues we've seen. You can call super because you're just defining a subclass. And it's a clearly documented extension point. So if something goes wrong, you know exactly where to look. And finally, this is a stable customization contract that the extension maintainer commits to providing and maintaining over time. So it is much less likely that this will be broken by an extension update at some point. Now, this is a very simple and elegant approach and we think that it will solve 90% of our problems. But it's not all. There is one more approach that we are experimenting with in the core of Solus, and we are very excited about the possibilities that it also opens for extensions. This is the Solus event bus. It's nothing new from a design perspective. You just fire events from one part of your app and then subscribe to those events from another part and run your own logic. And in this example, I have an extension that provides subscriptions for my Solus store, and I fire an event when a subscription is renewed. 
And then from the main application, and can subscribe to this event and notify the user to send a thank you note when they renew their subscription. Now, as I said, this is still experimental, but it's showing a lot of potential. It has support for multiple adapters. The default one is based on active support, but you can also easily write your own. And you can even make it asynchronous by using something such as Redis or RabbitMQ. And you can subscribe uh, with a block, as I'm doing in this example, if your logic is quite simple. Or if it's a bit more complex, you can define an entire class, which comes in handy if you want to unit test it. And finally, it's completely integrated in the extensions ecosystem. So you can either define custom events from inside extensions, or you can subscribe to events that happen in the core from inside extensions. Again, this work was started by Stambolt and then taken over by one of our developers, Sandra Lunghi. So check out the documentation, check out the source code, and let us know if you have any feedback. Now let's talk about governance. Historically, Solus has adopted this pre-governance model. So our code is distributed across two GitHub organizations. We have Solus IO, which is for critical functionality and the core. And then we have Solus IO Contrib, which is for additional community maintained functionality. Now we haven't done a great job over the years of enforcing this policy, which led to some interesting results. You can see in Solus IO we have stuff that is really not critical. And in Solus IO Contrib, we have very important code, such as our Stripe integration or Solus CMD, which is the foundation for all other extensions. This not only sends the wrong message to our users about what our priorities are, but it's also bad use of the core team's time because we're asking them to work on stuff that is not really fundamental. Moving forward, we want to do a much better job of enforcing this governance model. So Solus IO will be used as originally designed for critical functionality and integrations with major service providers. And the code that goes in here will have to be proposed by the core team and approved by the core team. And Solus IO Contrib will continue to be the place for additional functionality and the code in here will be proposed and maintained by the community. The core team will continue to provide guidance and tools around how to properly maintain extensions, but they will not actively work on community code anymore. Additionally, when we were categorizing extensions to figure out in which organization to put them and grading them by importance, we also realized that there were a few categories that we are not very interested in maintaining at all. We have legacy code, so features that have been extracted from the core into an extension to provide an easier migration path. And then we have customizations that are so simple, you'd be better off implementing them yourself, such as the Google Analytics code for your front end. And on the other end of the spectrum, we also have features so complex and specific to your business rules that an extension will never be able to provide the required level of flexibility. We pride ourselves with Saldus being the best platform for custom e-commerce stores, and we felt like there was really no place in its ecosystem for these extensions. So moving forward, we are archiving them. You won't be able to open any new issues or submit any pull requests, but you can still download them and use them as the starting point for your own customizations. We hope that by doing this, we're sending a message to the community about what kind of extensions we want to see. And we're also freeing up the time of the core team and our maintainers to do more strategic work. Now for the last part of this talk, advertising extensions. All of this work is great and will save us a lot of time, but it won't be worth much if no one knows about our extensions ecosystem in the first place. And when you look at the competition, you have to give it to them that they're doing a much better job than we are at advertising their extensions. Now partly this is because most platforms out there monetize their extensions. And so they have a very strong interest in making sure that they're easily discoverable. But it's also because they understand that if you want people to use extensions, you have to give them an amazing experience before they even install anything. When you look at Saldus today, there are at least four different channels where you can find Saldus extensions. You have the extensions page on the Saldus website, and then you have Salton, a search engine for Saldus extensions developed by Nebula, the build matrix, and the GitHub organizations. Now each of these contain a subgroup of all the Solus extensions out there. And Soliton is probably the most complete because it just runs a search on GitHub, but it's also the only unofficial one. 
and they provide virtually no information about the quality of these extensions. We know that we can do better than this, and we owe it to our community to do better than this. So moving forward, our next big project for extensions will be to provide a unified marketplace. A single experience where you have one point of discovery for all of the solidest extensions that have ever been developed, and quality metrics that can help you make the right decision. Things such as how active the maintainer is, what quality can I expect from the code, what's the test coverage like. And finally, this will be the perfect place to provide even more tools for our maintainers, to streamline and simplify their work even more and save as much time as possible. We believe that there's still a lot of potential for Solidus extensions, and we are very excited about the possibilities that a real marketplace will open. So stay tuned for updates on this in 2020, and let us know if you have any ideas. Now, coming back to the title of my talk, which was a bit dramatic, are extensions truly dead? Well, it turns out they are, but only in the sense that we need to radically rethink our strategy and refocus our efforts around extensions. But in fact, we feel like extensions have never been so alive in the history of Solidus ever before. And if we do this right, we have the opportunity to provide a shining extensions ecosystem, which will be a huge selling point for Solidus and will continue to save us time and money. Now, with that said, we can't do this alone and you knew this part was coming. We're looking at the community to help us, and there are different ways you can do this. You can volunteer as an extension maintainer, or you could contribute on GitHub with issues and pull requests. You can improve the automation tools for extension maintainers. And finally, you can support us financially in Open Collective to help us sponsor more and more work on extensions. With your help, we believe that we can truly build the future of Solidus. And that future will definitely continue to be free, open, and extensible. Thank you.